On the 18th of June, we venerate St. Elizabeth of Schönau, who was a German Benedictine visionary. She experienced numerous religious visions, for which she became widely sought after by many powerful men as far away as France and England. Born in Germany in 1129 of a prominent and pious family, she entered the Black Benedictine Double Monastery at Chenal at age 12, made her profession in 1147 and became abbess in 1157. Her hagiography describes her as given to works of piety from her youth, much afflicted with bodily and mental suffering, a zealous observer of the rule of St. Benedict and of the regulation of her convent, and devoted to practices of mortification. In the years 1147 to 1152, Elizabeth suffered recurrent disease, anxiety and depression as a result of a strict asceticism. St. Hildegard of Bingen admonished Elizabeth in letters to be prudent in the ascetic life. At the age of 23, she began experiencing ecstasies and visions, which helped to provide answers to theological questions. In addition, she uttered prophecies as well as denunciations of abuses in the church and the Qatari heretics. These revelations usually occurred on Sundays and holy days at Mass or Divine Office or after hearing about or reading the lives of saints. Christ, his Blessed Mother, an angel or the special saint of the day would appear to her and instruct her or she would see quite realistic representations of the Passion, Resurrection and Ascension or other scenes of the Old and New Testaments. She also suffered the assaults of demonic forces. Elizabeth left behind a considerable body of writings, three books of visions, a short text about the Assumption of Mary, visions about the martyrdom of St. Ursula and her companions, the Book of the Ways of God and some letters. Elizabeth's brother Egbert, a priest and monk who later became the abbot at Chenal, served as her secretary and editor. Elizabeth's works include three visionary journals. Parts of these were circulated in her lifetime but not in their entirety. Elizabeth's popularity is evident considering those who called upon her for advice. The number of men who were very learned and religious who asked for letters from Elizabeth is astonishing. In addition, she wrote to powerful men when they did not ask for it as well. After her death in 1165, she was buried in the Abbey Church of St. Florin. Elizabeth was never formally canonized, but was added to the list of saints due to great popular devotion. She is the patroness against temptations. Placing all our petitions before her today, let us pray. O God, who called your handmaid, Blessed Elizabeth, to seek you before all else, grant that, serving you through her example and intercession, with a pure and humble heart, we may come at last to your eternal glory, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen.